Alright everyone, welcome back to Plants vs Zombies. Now, we're not going to look at the Zen Garden today because I will do that off recording and nothing has changed. So, today we're up to Bobsled Bonanza and Zombie Nimble Zombie Quick. These two are fairly straightforward. First of all, we have the Zomboni and the Bobsled team. Those are the only threats. And so... Jalapeno Boy will be a very good... Actually, let's check out the shop. Never mind, we're poor. Um... <laughs> so we'll probably need lily pads. We'll go for you. Tangle Kelp, not really necessary if we use cattails. So we'll go for these. And... go for walnuts. I'm feeling this strat. So, this is how the level starts. We have these long sheets of ice that have spawned in as soon as we have because it's part of the minigame. I don't know. That's about all I got. But, yes. So we have these long sheets of ice and essentially the bobsled team will absolutely adore these, and so won't mind coming out almost immediately when the level actually starts. Wait for it. It'll happen soon. I'm sure of it. So, what we are trying to do here is get a cattail as soon as possible. Okay, that's fine. Place a squash there. That problem will be solved rather easily. Which is great. The problem is the actual bobsled teams that show up later. They are the biggest nuisance and require the biggest of brains to deal with. I'm kidding, they really don't, but... Okay, very lucky for us. We didn't get a bobsled start. This is, this is the only nightmare I remember as a child, is that you could get bobsled teams from the get-go. It doesn't always start off with these classic zombon zombonies just cruising their way down and then easily falling to the trap of a squash or a, a uh, potato mine. No, you could get a bobsled team immediately and be screwed. Alright, so here's our first team. Perfectly fine, because we just do this. Now, the important thing about jalapenos is that they annihilate the row completely and these zombonies have to replace it before another bobsled team can come down that row. So essentially, if we manage to get a jalapeno in every single row and hold off the uh, zombonies for long enough, we've essentially aced the level. And that seems to be something we can handle rather well. So they are treating us very nicely by sending us hardly any bobsleds, even though that's kind of the idea. Right, but this level is rather easy. Admittedly, if you get a bobsled off the very start, my heart goes out to you. It's very difficult to handle. But, uh, yeah, overall, the level's not too bad. We've got it on lock, basically, now. And then, once you've cleared the road, make sure you put up defenses real quick. So that if any bobsleds do come down that row, they get annihilated instantly. And as you can see, these cattails actually protected this row from dying, well, it protected this potato mine from dying to the bobsleds completely. So they managed to destroy it before it even got close, which is exactly what we're looking for in terms of defense. So, I wonder if the cattails can protect this just as well, and they seem to be able to. So essentially you need three cattails in order to win this level. If you can get three cattails up, you've won. To my knowledge, but at least it's seeming that way. So our jalapeno is almost back up, which is good. It's just in case any bobsled teams come down top rows, which is great. Put a squash there. Get out of here. If you didn't know, well, for most cases, if there is a flag wave of zombies, generally they do have to be sent out in every single row. 
hence why the uh, regular ducky zombies and walking zombies will appear every flag. But mainly they're just trying to focus on the whole, uh, whatchamacallit, bobsled idea. Okay, so admittedly this guy has re-iced this entire row, basically, but that's not too much of a problem. Because our cattails are strong enough to handle an entire bobsled team, and these guys as well. See, this is why I love cattails so much. I don't even know if I've shown off cattails until now, but this is why they're the dopest thing on the planet in the PvZ world. Because they can aim any row, they shoot two shots before having to take a little break. And they just absolutely dominate everything. Bang, jalapeno, get them off. Bang, squash, get them off. So this entire level just revolves around having a lot of hard removal. And by hard removal, because admittedly, ever since I first heard the word hard removal, and that was while listening to people play Hearthstone, I had somewhat of an idea of what they meant, and then I picked it up real quick over time, but if you don't know what I mean by hard removal, essentially, removal in like a uh, desperate situation kind of way. So like, oh no, all the zombies are getting up here, cherry bomb, hard removal, kills pretty much everything in the game. Same with jalapeno, kills an entire row instantly. Potato mine kills a single zombie instantly, same with squash. Essentially just have a bunch of them, like I do here. And then one really strong main plant to use. And you should be good. Because honestly, Cattail can easily take out all of these guys, no problem. So long as you have enough of them. The only issue is with these pool zombies. Because sometimes if the bobsleds get far enough, the pool zombies will actually get quite close to your cattails and can even eat them. So just be aware of that and uh, keep an eye out because it can be an issue if you're not looking out for your cattails. Luckily for me though, I have been. These bobsled boys can't be going anywhere without any ice. So it's looking like an easy win for us. And yeah. We pretty much just have to wait now because our cattail army is strong, but at the same time, their targeting power is only single target. So, oh, oh, made it just in time. Didn't get crunched. But yes, as you can see, cleanup crew is active. We'll place a cherry bomb for these two. Easy removal. Easy removal? No, that's going to confuse people now. I say easy because it was easy to do with hard removal. Oh, that makes it even more confusing, but you get what I mean. So now we have eight cattails, and I said before that three was enough. And it might have been, but just in case, there's no harm in adding more. Especially not if you're trying to finish a level quickly. Absolutely destroyed. He took about one step before he realized I am dead. And then he fell on the ground. Well, undead, but you get what I mean. It's like, how do you even do that? Zombies are undead and you're killing them. What does undead mean? Does that just mean... That just means, like, yeah, like, undo. You, you've done something and then you undo it. So it's the... So you reverse it sort of thing. So they're dead but not dead? So they're alive dead? And then you can- okay, that can kind of make sense. I think we just debunked the crap out of that. Using English. Man, I haven't used English- well, I haven't been taught the subject of English in so long. It's been, what, two years now? Damn, I kind of miss it. Like, not like the homework and the assignments and the writing essays in under like an hour or so, but like, I do miss the occasional video we watch 
and the wacky explanations and uh, examples they use. Because English is a completely dumb language. Like, it's very popular and it's used widely around the world. I'm pretty sure it's the number one language around the world. Question mark. Don't, don't, don't quote me on that, but still. It's a very popular language, but it can be so confusing at times. And admittedly, I only know English and I've grown up with it, so I know all these BS rules. But anybody else that's learning English as a second language, props to you, man. Like, holy crap, if I had learned an entire other language and then they introduced me to there, there, and there in the English language, I'd be completely out of my mind. Like, why is it spelt differently, mean something different, but pronounced the same? It is horrendous to think about trying to learn English now. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but when you're when you're a child and when you're a baby, you're 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 sponge. <laughs> you're sponge. <laughs> uh, your brain is basically a sponge. Any information it can acquire and learn, it'll just soak up and love and hold on to and respect and remember during tests, exams, and all that good stuff. Which is very nice. Which is what we want them to do, right? But as you get older, your brain tends to be more on the slow side. This is why we have cherry bombs. And uh, it can it can start to fail you a bit, you know? When you're trying to learn a second language and you've passed puberty, it can be a lot more difficult to remember things. And so you kind of just want to give up. And then you realize, wait, I learned a language from like when I was a child. This can't be that difficult. And then you find out that it's actually a really difficult... It's not a feat that's impossible, but you can, in fact, learn another language. Many people have done so. But still. Very, very different if you've learnt two languages as a child versus if you've learnt one language as a child and you're trying to learn a second one now. No, oh, I thought I could save it with that cherry bomb. That's a shame. But yeah, so essentially... English is completely effed, but I miss it dearly because of that reason. Like, I don't know if you guys have heard of the buffalo example. Essentially, saying buffalo seven times in a row, if said with somewhat correct pronunciation and tone or something, it's a sentence. It's a full-blown sentence. And not just like a boring one, like, I don't know, he went to the shops and he did something like this. It's like an actual detailed sentence. And it completely makes sense in English. Okay, so we just unlocked Last Stand. I'll stop talking about English because it's kind of boring. Now, this is one of my favorite game modes that wasn't in the main game. Zombie Nimble Zombie Quick. It's the exact same game. We're versing these exact zombies, but the entire game is sped up. So, if you don't know what I mean, I will demonstrate. So we'll just go for something simple. Something like this. Throw in some cattails, because who doesn't love cattails? I love cattails. Um, and we'll throw in some snow peas, because I feel like we might need them. So essentially, the entire game is sped up two times. So as you can see, this sunflower is really grooving. And it's all about your APM. How many actions you can do per minute. And that also means potato mines grow faster, sun gets produced faster, sun drops on the sky faster, and overall you generally just have to be really quick with what you do. Which can be dreadful for some people, but I quite love it. Because it actually makes the game relatively interesting. Because most of the time the game is at a rather slow pace. And I feel like somehow this does slightly benefit me. Like, 
I know technically the zombies are sped up too, but I feel like I'm getting something from this as well. Ooh, 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 I'm slowing up, I'm slowing down, I'm slowing down, I'm misclicking, I'm misclicking. We all good. Alright, so, once we get the snow peas up in pretty much every row, we will be dandy. Guy blows up. But yes, this is <laughs> this is the complete opposite of the bobsled bonanza minigame, because this is sped the hell up. You will fly through this. And if you have good APM, you will have no problem with this whatsoever. And at the same time, I did talk about this during the uh, original playthrough, but, well, the main game playthrough I should say. So long as you are not the type of person to lose focus and not, like, miss something, you should be absolutely fine with this game mode. There should be no problem whatsoever, and you should slaughter it. There we go. Now we'll get down some cattails because they're OP, and they've got infinite range. I don't know if I mentioned that, but that's why they're OP, and it is delicious. So, we will continue our slaughter. Isn't slaughter such a beautiful word? Stop it. Okay, good. Now die. Okay, stop it. Good. Okay. Sorry, I just had to focus on the game here for a second. Which is, I'm sure, completely understandable. But, we should be pretty set up now. So this just goes to show you that, um, don't underestimate the basic beach plants. The basic beach plants. Don't underestimate the basic beach plants because they are quite handy. Regular pea shooters, actually one of the best plants in the game. Definitely not saying if we removed the cost of all the plants from the game that it would be number one. That's wrong by a long shot. But in terms of handling, 95% of the game, it does that extremely well. Same with these cattails. For the 10 levels that you actually can have them for, well, actually I think it's a bit less than that because you find Dave's key on the water levels, but for the levels that you do have the cattail for, you should probably use it. It's a bit expensive, but it covers every single row. How would you not like that? But yeah. As you can see, well, I don't know if it shows to you guys, but I really adore this level because of this the speed and the APM that you have to have to manage this level well. Like, I feel like if I wasn't who I am and I had, I had slower APM, I would struggle with this level. But I do not. Because I am me. And... I have been playing video games for ages, so 9 times out of 10, my APM is rather good. Maybe not so much with these coins, but I don't know if I've actually missed any coins, but I presume I have because I've mainly been focusing on the left side of the screen for good reason, making sure I don't miss any sun, even though I don't really need it now. But essentially, this is all you need to do to beat this level. Set up a good amount of pea shooters, set up a good amount of snow peas, set up some cattails for the late game, and you will be right. Oh no, 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 there we go. APM caught up, it's just a bit slow. It's not even that my APM is slow, it's just that I can't feel like where my mouse is going to be, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know if it's because I haven't found the correct sensitivity for me or something, but basically I can't really tell where my mouse is going to end up with the movements that I do on my uh, mouse pad. Alright, that was officially one of my favourite minigames. And, we've unlocked Zombotany 2. 
which we struggle with Zombotany 1, but Zombotany 2, I feel like it might be slightly easier, but that's for another episode. And not even the next one, because next one we have Whacker Zombie and Last Stand. Which will be two very interesting, well, one very interesting game mode. This one we've played before, except it's a little bit harder this time around. As is with all these other games we've played before, Walnut Bowling. And Walnut Bowling. But yeah, it, it's, it's just a lot more difficult this time around. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Take care of yourselves and each other. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.